Welcome everyone, and especially to our speaker today, Carolina Angel Botero. Uh, for those of you who might be joining us for the first time, the Latin American Anthropology Seminar Series is a forum for early career scholars who conduct ethnographic research in Latin America to present their work. And the seminar has been running for over a decade and is now hosted by the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies, CLACS, at the School of Advanced Study, University of London. We are three conveners, uh, Jessica Sclair, who is based at Cambridge, uh, Denise Roman Burgos, who is not with us today and is based at Aberdeen, and myself, I know I'm Montoya, based at CLACS. The seminars run fortnightly on Thursdays at 5 p.m. UK time, and our next session will be on 25th of November. The full program is available on the CLAX website and we are gonna be posting um, the link to it on the chat box. And you can also follow us on social media or subscribe to CLAX newsletter in order to get updates on upcoming sessions. So please do join us for future sessions as well. And I'm delighted to introduce today Carolina Angel Botero, who uh, recently got her PhD in anthropology from Universidad de los Andes in Colombia, and who is now an associate researcher with an ERC project called um, Rivers, Water, Human Rights, Beyond the Human. And her talk today is entitled Peace Producing Science, Biological Expeditions in the Replacement of War. Carolina is going to talk for about 30 to 45 minutes, and then we will open it up for a Q&A, aiming to finish around 6.30 p.m. If you'd like to ask a question, you're very welcome to post it on the, in the chat box during um, Carolina's talk or during the Q&A, and I'll be, I'd be happy to uh, read out your question. You're also very welcome to ask it the question yourselves and you can then use the raise hand function available on zoom and i'll ask you to mute and ask your question when it is your turn so um i only have to say that we are recording the talk and uh, we won't be recording the q a but we will be making available the talk by carolina on the clax youtube playlist so i think that's all from me um so over to you carolina Okay, thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation. I'm, I'm very I'm delighted to be here today. Um, so I'll be reading my presentation because I want to be precise and very clear with what, I, what I'm going to explain today. Uh, and I'm going to share now my presentation. Here. Good. So um, this this is part like, what I'm going to introduce. What I'm going to uh, present today is part of my uh, doctoral thesis project. It's, it's one of the chapters of, of my project, and I just want to focus on one of the concepts I I develop in my thesis. Um, so I'll start. After the signature of the peace treaty with FARC guerrilla. The Colombian government ended a 60 year conflict with one of the oldest guerrilla movements in the world. Along, alongside, the, the, alongside the signature of the peace treaty began a national project to conduct biological inventories of species through a series of expeditions called Colombia Vie. The idea behind these expeditions was to explore and register biodiversity in places formerly occupied by the FARC. This talk recounts my experience accompanying five of these expeditions as an anthropologist. My interest has been to understand the relationship between science and peace as they are specifically enacted in the post-agreement moment. So uh, for this presentation, I will begin by introducing my doctoral project. Then I will present a short clip with the visual representation of the expeditions and last, I will conclude by reflecting on the idea of the frontiers of peace and the role that biological science play in drawing such lines in Colombia after signing the treaty with FARC. 
The starting point for my research was to explore the political exercise of building baselines in the midst of a peace process. Recently, there has been a growing interest in understanding the political role of technical instruments such as nature inventories or baselines. In this sense, inventories are a way of making the environment legible in order to enable its management and regulation, obscuring the social natural framework that is part of its construction. In the case of Colombia, the baseline included peace as a concept that will define the approach from which the expeditions and inventories were built. Based on the above, the question guiding this research was, how does the scientific and political exercise of making biological inventories produce different forms of peace? And this is how biological science and transitional justice get intertwined in this case. This question is addressed taking into account the frontiers of peace that are drawn in this imaginary map of Colombia in peace. How Colombia is imagined with the, mo the mobilization of the FARC, what is the role of science in the creation of these frontiers of peace and how the construction of, base, of, of baselines comes to give a form and substance to the peace process. This is a particular case in which natural history participates as it has done before in the political life of a nation. These Colombia bio, uh, bio expeditions relate to that history of Terra Nullus or Res Nullus, making reference to the 16th century when the British crown arrived in Australia and used this concept to justify the conquest of this territory. It refers to no man's land and no man's things in Roman law. In the context of the post agreement, it is possible to expand this definition as the terra nullius of peace, as places formerly occupied by FARC will now be source of resources for a nation that is thought differently. Now I will present a short uh, trailer made by Colombia Bio uh, and, and the and Conciencia, Conciencias, which, has, which is now the Ministry of Science in Colombia which is the local funding partner for the expeditions, where you can observe more clearly this idea of the terra nullius or the, uh, the, the, the terra nullius of peace. The trailer called This is Colombia, a look from our Colombia Bio expedition, makes a general presentation of the different expeditions. A background music like the one generally used to emphasize the heroes in the movies accompanies the image of researchers in the field. So let me play the video. Era como entrar a otro país, casi siempre pues te encontrabas con los grupos armados. Colombia había sido el hueco negro, nadie conocía qué había aquí. Eran muy pocos los que lograban salir al mundo por el miedo que les pasara algo. Tú encuentras una, una diversidad muy grande y sobre todo unas poblaciones en muy buen estado. salga a la luz, que todo esto salga a la luz. 
porque esto estaba como, como, como detrás de una cortina. Entonces corramos esa cortina, contémosle al país cuál es, cuál es el verdadero país que tenemos. Y nuestro país es este, diversidad biológica y cultural. No, sorry. Uh, la siguiente. Okay. So first, the voice of Andres Acosta is heard saying, it was like entering another country almost every time because you encounter armed groups. With this phrase, he opens the clip, immediately enters the voice and the image of another of the researchers from the Sinchi Institute another of the scientific research institutes in biodiversity in Colombia. Sitting in the middle of the forest, he says, Colombia has been a black hole. Nobody knew what was here and few, very few managed to go out into the bush for the fear that something would happen to them. The other clips have a similar narrative, that of the discovery of the forgotten country Uh, thus, while you see in the background images with researchers touring natural la landscapes, walking, riding in boats with, flash with flashlights on their, on their heads, Dairon Card Cardenas, botanist of the Sinchi Institute, says, it is time for all of these to become known to the world because it was hidden behind a curtain. So let's open that curtain. Let's tell our people about our real country, that, that this is the country with biological and cultural diversity. The intensity of the music increases and some drums mark the emotion of the moment. A researcher appears looking through the binoculars that focus on a plane of an endless landscape of mountains covered with forest that give the sensation of having found paradise. In the, con in the context of Colombia Bio, this exercise of sovereignty over natural resources begin with the recognition, and those are the expeditions, and their use through the development of bioproducts. But it occurs in such a way that this sovereignty, sovereignty is thought as having resources as, the, as at the disposal of a nation. What is done in the name of peace is to recover control and give order to, the, to those places where the state present operated in other ways. The, the frontiers of peace find their origin in the concept internal frontiers coined by Margarita Sergio, a Colombian anthropologist with, with, which used this term to describe the 19th century con country built on the imaginary of vast jungle regions incapable of governing themselves. Later, the same idea is reproduced to describe zones of armed conflict in Colombia towards the 2000s. It shows how a particular vision of the state is built from the need to control those other territories or no man's land. Those internal borders have a colonial history of wild regions to be explored. After signing the treaty with FARC, this idea gains, gains strength through the Colombia Bio project, where the pieces of the puzzle are again distributed and new borders are drawn. But this time, it is the idea of peace which draws the line. Thus, it is an update in this permanent construction of, of places in which the state seeks to identify what is or what is not included and how to integrate it into the national economic project. The inventory of, of species launched by Colombia Bio uh, had a starting date, 2016. Prior to this, 
says the project, the guerrillas maintain control of many of Colombia's most remote, but, almost, but also most biodiverse areas. This has limited development and opportunities with a, ne with a negative so uh, socioeconomic impact, as argued by Bridge Colombia, an association between English and Colombian institutions. Within this framework, the design and implementation of the Colombia Bio project had five components. The first, the expeditions, reinforces this notion of pristine nature it, uh, that needs to be known under the assumption of information gaps. So uh, these are the five uh, components of the Colombia Bio project. So uh, the first one is the expeditions in which I participated. But the other, at least the other four components are related to um, economic development of these, um, of these resources that were uh, identified during the expeditions. The Newton Caldas Fund that finances the Colombia Bio project began operating in Colombia in 2014. At that time, the Newton Fund will allocate over four million pounds for five consecutive years. This budget was subsequently extended to 2021 in order to consolidate a total investment of 30 million pounds. This was followed by a visit from the former Colciencias director, Janet Jiha, to the UK in 2016. The UK, and I quote, and Colombia announced today a new 20 million pound bio bioeconomy research program responsible for the development of new drugs, medicines, biofertilizers, and products to combat pollution, published the English government on its internet site. It also highlights the words of Jiha, who sealed the union between peace and this economic project by pointing out that the UK is a key strategic partner of Colombia in our quest for peace through the biodiversity research and innovation. Both nations must therefore continue to work together for sustainable and lasting scientific cooperation. The expeditions began that same year. Headlines such as Colombia will launch the botanical expedition of the 21st century filled the national media. The idea of discovery and science as the vehicle for that exploration showed continuities with the colonial project. The first of, of the expeditions in which I participated took place in the village of La Belleza in the municipality of Carmen de Chucurí. It was also the first expedition of Santander Bio, one of the regional chapters of Colombia Bio. The government of Santander allocated nearly 8,000 million pesos for, from its science and technology budget to carry out three expeditions in the department. And the Humboldt Institute and the Industri Industrial University of Santander were there in charge of carrying out the research work and coordinating the expeditions. This place had been chosen by the researchers due to the lack of information on the populations of different biological groups. During the presentation of the project in the major's office of Carmen de Chucurí, Mauricio, the, the expedition's coordinator, showed a map that couldn't be seen because due to the amount of light in the room, it was not possible to check on the, on, on the video beam. The lack of data on species in the, municipality, in the municipality led us to ask ourselves what species are there. We are in charge of telling you what there is and what you're doing and what you are in charge of doing is, is uh, to do something with that information. The options are many, he said, before giving the floor to Javier Barriga, coordinator of Colombia Bio Expeditions. We're going to be 50 people trying to get to know the municipality better. Also, we will be in contact with the police and the army so that they know that we're going to be there so that they don't confuse us. And he was uh, making reference to armed groups. He explained. Before his intervention, the mayor made a comment that showed the political negotiations behind the choice, the choice of the expedition site. I am envious because San Vicente, which is a nearby uh, municipality, is being given the cacao park. But the governor said, I also have something for you, very special for you in Carmen, and it was Santander Bio. Now we're Car Carmen Bio. What better than this project to show them that we have uh, what we have? 
people will come from Bogota, from Medellin, because, because here there are some species of interest. Mauricio's uh, objective was to collect as many species as possible for the Register of Biodiversity in Santander which found a counterpoint in the way the major imagined the purpose of the inventory. The expedition began in February 20, 2018. On the first day of our arrival, I went searching for frogs with Andres, curator of herpetology at the Humboldt Institute. He had an incredible ability to see frogs in the dark. The distance between what Andres did, his passion and a lifetime of work in the field, Traveling all corners of this country, learning about reptiles and amphibians, contrasted with the aspiration of the data revolution to make Colombia bioeconomy grow, as defined by Bridge Colombia. A group of English and Colombian institutions that are part of the Alliance Colombia Bio. The idea is to create an infrastructure, an infrastructure available online that collects all genetic information of the specimens collected in the field. Over the next few years, thanks to the peace agreement signed in 2016, the Colombia Bio Initiative uh, led by Consciencias and Research in Investments by the RC UK Global Challenges Research Fund and the Newton Caldas Fund, large amounts of that biodiversity data will be collected. The ability to share access and analyze this information is critical to Colombia's scientific and socioeconomic growth, providing a model for other biodiversity rich countries in South America, explains Grow Colombia, a, an initiative led by the Earlham Institute. Kew Gardens, due to its close relation to the work of inventory of biodiversity, is also part of this Colombia Bio program. The goal of this project with the Botanical Garden is to transform the Colombian economy to one based on green growth, helping the country to make sustainable use of its rich natural capital and biodiversity. The agreement signed on November 2, 2016 by Janet Jehan Nick Hurd at the Natural History Museum in London is the framework from which all these other links with different English research institutions have taken place. For Colombia Bio, it is limited to biodiversity research. Despite this institutional framework during field work, it was difficult to maintain a bioeconomy perspective while being with the researchers. Their passion for the work, their commitment to the conservation of animals and ecosystems in general blurred these other components of the Colombia Bio project. But that doesn't mean that it's not necessary to put the inventories in perspective and try to understand the political work that goes into them. Thus the inventory went beyond the researcher, his flashlight, his field journal, his passion, knowledge, and his specimen. All the work of the scientist was not on the sidelines, but was part of the network in which this knowledge is built. In as much as since the signing of the cooperation agreement in London, the directions that this information to take, should take had already been established. Professor Silvia Restrepo, Vice Rector of Research at Universidad de Los Andes in Colombia added, genomics allow us to understand the potential of, of this diversity in a more effective, efficient and rapid way. In order to move from an economy based on energy from non-renewable resources to a knowledge-based economy. This partnership will catalyze Colombia's transformation, making reference to the alliance with British Columbia institutions. Some other expeditions are still underway. For example, with Kew Gardens, the Humboldt Institute is carrying out Boyacá Bio and Nariño Bio from where, from where they have joined efforts to build an inventory, create a seed bank for Boyacá, and send Colombian seeds to the Kew Seeds Bank. And this particular project is called Colplanta, which draws on Q's taxonomy expertise to contribute directly to the goals of Colombian governmental organizations to develop national and regional biodiversity catalogs while supporting the transformation of Colombia economy to one based on green growth, explained, uh, explained uh, Mauricio Diaz Granados at Q Gardens. It's not evident at first glance at first glance, the concrete benefit to be derived from this project. 
In fact, there is also no clarity on the advantages of green growth in a particular way. In this regard, Hickel and Callis point out that the benefits of this economic project have been accepted almost without discussion, without taking into account, for example, that there is no consensus among the three institutions from which its definition emerges, World Bank, OECD, and United Nations Program for the Environment. After analyzing the environmental, uh, the available empirical information on which the idea of green growth is based, they identified that it has many more challenges than, than possibilities. And I quote, existing empirical studies show that green growth is at best very unlikely, the authors conclude. In this case, through the idea of peace, the promise of resources that will be available to cope with economic difficulties is also mobilized, raising the possibility of a better future. But it is also the justification for appropriating a series of resources that it is said the state did not have the possibility of exploding and which becomes possible at the moment after the agreement with FARC. Mobilizing through these feelings a series of ideas about the discovery and exuberance of places that the state has not been able to reach peacefully, ignoring in this path the stories that are woven and the socio-environmental conflicts in which they are immersed. From this perspective, the inventory becomes the present of nature, living its previous history in oblivion. It is as if it were possible to erase the past, not only with respect to the enormous changes that nature has undergone in Colombia, but also the great danger of these statements, that, that of erasing deaths, displace, displacements, mines planted, acts of contamination with pipeline blasting or aerial spraying, among others. At a stroke, it seems that we turn the page and start over again in a blank one. In the natural sciences, this has a name. It's called shifting baseline syndrome, which implies constructing an initial reference to which one can return, as if these in itself contain the past. It also means whipping slate clean with respect to the other peace processes that have taken place in Colombia. So, such a syndrome becomes the starting point of a new normality. In this way, researchers maintain a constant concern for finding pristine nature to fill these baselines so that they will be the most representative of the place, regardless of whether we were standing on, on a paddock. The baseline could not be built from that image that human activity and species leave in their, in their wake. But on the contrary, the idea was to be as far away from it as possible. By capturing nature, it stops it in time, leaving behind its past and writing from the species a genealogy about its role in the origin of peace. What interests me here about nature is not its definition as such, but the ways it is giving meaning and use to construct the idea of peace as the absence of conflict and the possibility of discovery. This project seeks to, make, seeks to make evident the mistakes that are made when it is assumed that post-conflict sin, sin, is synonymous with all that is good. On the contrary, taking science throughout the country, replicating this idea, it starts from the assumptions in which a process of ignoring or erasing the histories, the people and the conflict dynamics uh, in which they are immersed, of course. Assuming, in addition, the benefits of an appropriation and exploitation of natural resources of natural resources by the state as an unquestioned benefit of peace. This is what Hernando Garcia, at the time the deputy scientific director of the Humboldt Institute, defined as the opportunity to learn about our great biodiversity due to the withdrawal of the FARC, thus building the imaginary of a country with unexplored, uninhabited and distant portions of the national territory and now available for research. Also, what researchers from the Center from the, for the Study of Law, Justice and Society, the Justicia, call off-limit zones. This idea of what is off-limits assumes that the state 
has not been there in any way and reinforces the critique on which Margarita Serge has built the concept of the internal borders of the nation, which is based on imaginaries of a country living a war in, a, in the periphery, a marginal, rural, abandoned country anchored in the 17th century and controlled by warlords. This vision explains the author, produces a particular geography of the nature, of, of the na of the nation, its nature and, and its people, which reinforced from the urban centers and has contributed to the dehumanization of these landscapes, and in particular, its people. However, the myth of the wild, vast, and desert geography has been used to consolidate a minimum level of articulation and a veil of opacity with, behind which the imposition of another order is made possible. The expeditions in this context show that articulation is possible through science and that, si and that since the other orders do not control these territories, the internal borders can be linked to the nation, to its economic order through the scientific practices. During the expedition to Simitarra as part of the Santander Bio project, this idea of past wild um, lands guard, uh, guarded by conflict faded in the field. While walking with the biologist through the mountains bordering the Quinchas, the Quinchas mountain range, right on the border with Boyacá, rumors that we were anti-narcotics anti officials brought the expedition to an early end. The untouched, sorry. The untouched and conflict protected nature assumed by the Colombia Bio project contrasted with the current and past history of this region of coca cultivation and paramilitarism. And the pictures you're gonna uh, see, I, it's part of, of the location in which uh, we were doing the expedition. After a few days walking through the middle of, a, of the pasture on the road that led to the bird camp, Don Miguel told me some coca related stories. The big crops are on the other side of the mountain ridge, in the upper parts, in an area called Guinea. A month ago, not even a month ago, he said, the troops came back, it, it came back in and they were over there finishing the uprooting. He said, well, from a, from a hill, we observed some patches of grass in the forest. While the expedition continued, as the days went by, things became more tense, especially inside the camp. Mauricio was having hushed conversations with the social expedition leader, Maria Fernanda. If for some reason when approached, they would divert the conversation. On several occasions, they left in the vans without giving much explanation. Threats or rumors regarding our presence were kept in secret from those of us in the camp. However, it all became ine inevitable when all of a sudden the investigators were, were told to pack up. That meant finishing the last remaining preparations, not to take the last runs and to warn as soon as possible those at the birds come, uh, camp to come down the mountain. It was paradoxical to observe how the idea of post-conflict was articulated with what we were living through. I went straight from Guineales to Bocas de Carare after this outing to talk about the benefits of peace for science exploration and investment. It all seemed like a big lie. I felt behind the scenes watching a show where I silently thought about what happened in the camp while listening to the governor of Santander talk about peace to the media. Mentioning the conflict in the middle of Colombia, uh, mentioning about the conflict in the middle of Colombia Bio Expedition would affect the whole project. One could not argue the case for exploring nature after war and the concept of peace as the, accent, as the, as, as the absence of conflict because it would go down the drain. Mauricio Torres, Santander's Bio's, Bios project coordinator, had organized an event to receive the governor and entrepreneurs from Bucaramanga. In a single day on the banks of the Carare River, the natural history of peace was stacked 
the tension between peace and conflict, the arrival of resources to finance the peace project, and biodiversity as the guiding thread of a narrative that sought, that sought to give an account of what was possible after the signing of the peace agreement. Of the peace agreement. The peace, the peace to which the governor made reference to gave account of a different future where nature was the resource that could make new, a new country possible, setting in motion imaginaries of faraway places of untouched nature and lands inaccessible due to armed conflict. This peace performance that opened the doors of nature was the ideal scenario in which the state and the local government in association with private enterprise could appropriate, exploit and commercialize the riches stored there for the development of the region and the country. For its part, science made its political role even more evident as the scientists were the promoters and hosts of the, of the events. Therefore, animals and plants turned into species acquired the capacity to articulate the strongest arguments in favor of the project. So these are my close, now I'm gonna uh, close, no, I'm gonna do my closing remarks of the presentation. Uh, and these pictures you're gonna see uh, are on the Carmen de, de, de Chucuri when we were looking for the site for doing the, the expedition. So uh, closing remarks, the frontiers of peace. So a quick wrap up. Why is nature the entry point of the study for the study of peace? Nature in this context has a profound political imp implications for the way peace is um, understood. On the one hand, peace is introduced as the possibility of accessing faraway places. This produces as well the idea of untouched nature in remote places where it is said armed conflict help to protect. Therefore, it is understood as something distant from the centers of knowledge production, since the sensation of distance, closeness or remoteness will depend on the place occupied by the observer. On the other hand, peace understood as the opening of new spaces for scientific activity, that is peace as the possibility of discovering a new species or updating the records of biodiversity in Colombia is built from a particular form of knowledge about nature. But these are not mere geographical frontiers that trace the idea of remoteness. they are also frontiers of the knowledge that is constructed from the center. What the research and the project in general express is this idea of pristine and wild nature awaiting discovery as opposed to, of, to areas of cultivation, grazing, or any other type of economic exploitation. It is there in those corners of the nation where the Colombia Bio project imagine, imagines are the resources for the new country. As pointed out by Colombia Bio project, biodiversity takes a great importance and it is, as, it is the asset that the country has to face the new economic and development trends that appear in the current global landscape. It is thought believed that thanks to the conflict, it was possible to avoid economic exploitation of large areas of the country. However, this paradox ignores, for example, other, far, other forms of appropriation and exploitation, mostly illegal, that have taken place in these territories for decades. I will conclude this presentation with an ethnographic vignette from the first Santander Bio expedition on the preparatory expedition to define the campsite. Prior to the first Santander Bio expedition, we met at Venado de Oro, the main headquarters of the Humboldt Institute in Bogota, to discuss the project. During the presentation, Maileen pointed out that we were going to these places, to these areas, because there is no data. She said, uh, showing a map with, um, with municipalities that had been prioritized. The lack of data was there was therefore one of those elements that participated in the construction of these imaginaries about the natural world wealth of war. Next, Mauricio, the leader for the expedition, pointed out a polygon that is the name given by biologists to an area of study. Demarcated in Carmen de Chucuri. The place of the expedition was changed because there were reports of landmines, he said. 
The criteria for defining a polygon was based first on biological interests. That is, that the greatest number of groups must be represented. The key is the presence of uh, the key is the presence of rivers for herpetophytes and fish, as well as mature forest for plants, insects, and birds. Also, that there are no species that are in that area. That does not mean that no one has been there before, but that data has not been made public. There are places with information gaps reporting less than 1% of data in the Colombian Biodiversity Information System, argued Mauricio. Uh, one of the attendees asked for the floor. Are you sure those aren't paddocks? He asked. Mauricio answered with a straight no. In fact, he returned the question to the social science group. The most unexplored part is the, is the highlands. But for social scientists, does it make sense to go there? He asked, pointing out that we were not going to find anyone there to interview. During the preparatory expedition to Carmen de Chucuri in the last days of January 2018, and after presenting the project at the major's office, we headed to the village of La Belleza, about three hours from the town center. Santiago, a local contact Mauricio had made, wanted to show us his property, which will be the place to set up the camp and the surrounding areas where the sampling will take place. The day was exhausting. From where the van dropped us off to Santiago's house, the climb was nonstop. Up to there, it was all pasture, no forests but the promise of the forest was higher and higher and higher. Finally, we reached the house in a hill when Javi told Mauricio that it was enough, that there was no point on continuing with the hike. Javi, who worked in the expedition logistics, was, think, was just thinking about how he will get the equipment, labs, and people up there. Most of the researchers are old and it's going to be hard for them to climb, he explained. How much farther do we have to walk to get to the forest? He asked Santiago, who wasn't clear on what they were looking for. For him, those little patches of forest were enough, but not for the biologists. The forest has been heavily logged, especially because they have taken out most of the big trees, Jose the botanist explained to me. Although it looked fine to the naked eye, it wasn't by their standards. Javi tried to explain to Santiago what a forest for biological standards was like. Human intervention, but there is non-human intervention, but there is none of that here, he told him. Santiago kept pointing to the mountains, determined to lead the researchers. How far is it to the park from here? Asked Mauricio, referring to the Serranía de los Yariguíes National Park. Three more hours, Santiago replied. That sealed the conversation with silence for a while. Mauricio looked at the map on the computer again, which he had checked insistently all along the way when he found nothing. The rest of us stared at the landscape within, and, in a, and in the distance, we could see smoke. Santiago and Javi continued the conversation about the forest. Seeing that they could not come to terms, Javi explained to Santiago, that it was precisely because of this situation that it was important to protect nature. Because they only had a bunch of, because you only have a bunch of patches of forest thing out that did not, that, that did not promise a good future for biodiversity conservation in the area. That's why civil society reserves are created to protect, he insisted. He spent a long time explaining the importance of conservation and the sadness of walking for so many hours and not finding what they were looking for. Thus, those areas of the national territory imagined by the Colombia Bio project as biodiverse pantries were becoming blurred. The frontiers of peace not only trace the potential sites for scientific research in biodiversity, but also under the, the rumor of the resources, build the promise of economic alternatives for a country that imagines itself different. Under, under these metaphors, there is a colonial history of an unfulfilled coloni colonization, and that comes to be fulfilled years later with the signing of the peace agreement with the FARC. 
redefining these territories under the framework of the agreement as no man's land or tenalulus of peace is a dangerous and violent form of reinstalling, reinstalling previous forms of violence. So um, this is my presentation for today. <laughs> <laughs>